Well, come back. It's not just the jewellery industry that has a wish list for the government this budget. The sugar industry too is looking forward to a series of incentives from the government with focus on ethanol and renewables. Sugar manufacturers have been seeking a revision in minimum support prices as well as revenue sharing formula. They also want the government to introduce measures to shield prices from inflation. Meanwhile, ethanol makers are looking forward to a policy that would promote renewable energy through an ethanol blending program. They also wish for incentives to promote second-generation ethanol and flex-fuel hybrid vehicles and a lot of support on that. Joining me now to take all of these discussions forward is Sanjoy Mohanty, who is Director General at Indian Sugar Mills Association. Mr. Mohanty, hi, thank you for joining us. And what a year 2022 has been. I mean, it completely changed the way we looked at the sugar as an industry. Clearly, the government incentives, measures have been a lot of support as well. And the global and somehow the fundamentals that has worked for the industry too. I'll begin with asking you on how the 2022 year has been as a whole. Well, thank you, Manisha, for having me on the show. 2022 has been a watershed year. It's been remarkable. The highest ever production, the highest ever export at over 11 million tons, something that not only the industry but the world never expected, and the highest ever production of ethanol. We achieved a 10% blend in line with the Prime Minister's vision of achieving a 10% ethanol blend being delivered to the consumers of the country. So... 22 has been, like I said, a watershed year in the change that we will see from sugar industry just producing sugar to being a part of an energy hold for the government. And the government today, which is pushing very hard on climate change, requires renewables to be a part of this. And ethanol is playing this great role in nation building to help promote not only the Prime Minister's vision, but to be able to give the consumers and the, of the country a cleaner air to be able to breathe in. Oh, well, absolutely. And the first ever is not ending anytime soon, is it, Mr. Mohanty? Because the, for the first time ever at the Auto Expo, ISMA has a stall that starts from 11th of January. So uh, clearly, when it comes to biofuels, ethanol, flex hybrid vehicles, all of that really seems to be bringing the sugar industry on the fore. Absolutely right, Manisha. It's unimaginable that what is sugar doing in an auto expo? And let me just take a couple of minutes to give people a sense of what we are doing. Uh, ethanol is among the cleanest fuels that you can get. And as a biofuel which is made in India, produced in India, for India, you can't have a better form of energy security. So we've achieved the 10% and it was important for the consumers to know the role that ethanol is playing in nation building. We deliver the solution and the great part of ethanol is that it works on existing vehicles. You don't need to buy new vehicles. Number two, it works on existing infrastructure. So we are not putting up new infrastructure to deliver the ethanol across the country. Number three, the higher, larger amount of ethanol, more sugarcane being produced. We are augmenting farm incomes. So there's a clear benefit going all the way back. And let's not forget, all this is leading to saving in Forex. A 10% blend saves the Indian uh, finance over 14 to 15,000 crores. So every percentage increase that we increase in our blend is adding to two important things, energy security and saving in Forex, other than delivering a cleaner air into this whole country. Oh, well, absolutely. So, Mr. Mohanty, well, absolutely. Last one year has been, uh, as you say, uh, something of a watershed year for the industry here. I also want to start asking about the budget wish list that the industry may have. And I, I mean, I, I, I seek your advice whether I should start with sugar or ethanol on this one. But let's start on ethanol since we are on that topic. With so much happening, with the kind of investment that we're looking at, CAPEX, etc., what kind of subsidies, incentives has the government laid out for you? And what are you anticipating now from the budget? Well, at the outset, I must com compliment the government for not only being proactive, but being a huge enabler for the investment to come in. They put out the interest subvention scheme, which has made the difference. But let's not forget, our goals are not just ambitious, they are audacious. The ethanol 20% blend program was supposed to be done by 2030. And the Prime Minister has pulled that back to 2025. What does that mean? It means that we need to put up additional investment in creating capacity 
we have the sugar to be able to uh, make ethanol, but we need additional capacity for juice to be turned into ethanol. And what does that mean? It just means that there is a particular investment that needs an IRR. And for that, all that we've been asking the government is that we need a small revision in the price of juice to ethanol. And the whole idea of the revision is to ensure the capacities get put up. The capacities will end up delivering the objective the Prime Minister has put out of 20% blend and the fact that we can deliver a cleaner environment. So that's the first uh, you know, ask from the budget going forward, specifically on ethanol. Mm. And when it comes to sugar as an industry, the longest uh, ask clearly has been to increase the minimum support price for sugar sales. Is that still on cards? Absolutely, Vanisha. We as a sector have abided by the rules set out by the government. And there is a CSEP formula which says that the FRP will go up and the MSP will go up. Uh, over the years, the FRP has been going up. But for the last three to four years, we have not seen any increase in the minimum support price. And that is something that's been a request because currently the sales of sugar actually are happening above the MSP. So just as a natural consequence, it's just uh, it'll be great if the government can appreciate and take that price of MSP up. So you're right. It's a long-standing demand. And the reason is that the increase in MSP will only help to clear the farmer dues. There are no farm dues you know, because they all are paid off well in, uh, you know, well in time. Just appreciate the fact that we paid the farm dues within 14 days of the cane being delivered and the sugar is sold over 15 months. So that's a huge mismatch between working capital required. And that's what we seek from the budget is a revision in the MSP. Mm. You know, also, uh, while, of course, uh, coming back to ethanol and while uh, juice and molasses uh, is one part of it, the other clearly is about broken rice. And we do see smaller companies, smaller FMCG companies also try to make partake into this. How, how big a venture is that and how do you see that taking off? Sorry, are you asking about grain-based uh, yes, ethanol? Yes, grain-based ethanol. Is that ethanol. what you're saying? I missed that bit in the beginning. Well, it's wonderful that there are more sectors wanting to participate in this part of nation building. And we all can grow. The demand is humongous. And as we put up capacity, other grain-based manufacturers are putting up capacity. They're all working together to ensure that we deliver on the Prime Minister's goal. And the vision is doesn't will not stop at 20%. percent they will go up to 30 and finally, like Brazil, we will also have E100 where a customer can drive up and say, I want pure ethanol delivered into my car. So the opportunity, I mean, if I just take a, a, a allude to insurance, the sector is so large that just not one player can, you know, del, uh, deliver that. Same way, uh, this whole ethanol piece is so large, we are happy that we have grain participating and uh, to take, the, take care of any of the gaps that may arise. But as sugar sector, we're not only committed, but clearly delivering the largest portion of the ethanol that's being produced and consumed. All right. And, you know, a graph is never straight. You have ups and downs. And the down when it comes to sugar and ethanol is the kind of water guzzler this uh, crop has continued to be called. And there's just so much debate going around on how one litre of ethanol, how much of water does it cost? What, how is the industry looking at that? You know, Manisha, this is one point. I'm happy to have a debate uh, <laughs> with a small set of panelists. We all pick up a data point in isolation. Sugarcane is a 9-month or a 12-month or a 15-month crop, depending on what's there on the ground. Whereas paddy or any other crop is typically a 3-month or a 4-month crop. When you take it and you compare like to like, which means you take 3 paddy or 3, uh, you know, wheat, any cycle, and compare it to the cane, you'll suddenly discover that the water consumption is less. Forget about being a water guzzler. That's number one. Number two, uh, a lot of the cane growers are now shifting to drip irrigation. That's a huge plus. And why are they doing that? We as a sector, because we are zero, we consume everything and hence the whole concept of credits will come in and we will see how we can drive our community to gain more carbon credits by consuming less water. And last but not the least, it's very, very important to get facts right. And like I said, I'll be happy to do a panel discussion to show it's not a guzzler as it is being labeled as
All right, happy to do that as well some other time and I'll connect to you very soon on to this one. But thank you so much. No arrears, very strong sales, exports which have been at record highs and ethanol, a huge developing story there. So there's nothing that the sugar industry really seems to be lamenting about. But yes, there's a wish list even then from the budget this time around as always. Thank you, Mr. Monty, so much for joining us. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Commodity Champions. Thank you so much for watching.